In this video, we're going to focus on some of the cleansing functions available within the data cube. So in order to start, let's look at an existing data cube with some data. So you'll notice that there's a few issues with this data that I can improve right away. Uh, first of all, month and year. You'll notice that both of these are appearing in two different columns, and they're both coming back as an integer type data. So to solve that, let's click on the join between our select and our output result, and let's add a new node here called a calculated element. And what a calculated element does is it allows you to run C# -sharp code against every row basically in these in order to get the output that you want. So if I add a new calculated element, I'm going to return a date time type. I'm just going to call this date. And you'll notice there's a section here called placeholders. So for my case, month and year. These are the string values that I would use inside my code in order to reference specific columns. So let's edit the expression. I'm going to start with a return statement and say new datetime object, just like you would in .NET. And then the way datetime works, it's year, month, and day. So I'm going to take the year field. Oops, let's use the right ending there. And month. Spelling counts, so be sure that you do this properly. And then I'm always going to assume the first day of the month because I only have year and month right now. I want to hit save. You'll see it'll process that. And I will actually, if you go to the process result, have a new column here called date, which is representing both the month and the year. So what you'll see that I can do now is I no longer need these month and year columns. So let's remove it at the calculated element node. Then going into my process result, there's my date. And this will allow me to perform all the neat date functions that are included with Dundas BI, such as aggregating monthly, quarterly, you know, drill down, all the nice options that are there. Another issue with this data is the fact that salary here is given as only two digits, when in fact we have three digits here. So let's do the same idea. Let's create a calculated column. Configure salary. And this time to return a currency. So again, my placeholder is just going to be salary that I use. And then let's write an expression. So return, oops, salary times 1,000, which will give me the correct result. So save that. Again, when I view the data, you notice there's now two fields here called salary. There's our first one and our second one that has the correct number expanded out. So again, going back into the calculated element, let's remove the one that was initially there with the data. And there we go. Yet another issue. Uh, first name and last name are given as two separate columns. While this is fine in most cases, I actually want to be able to use these maybe as a chart on my x-axis as a single field. So I need to combine them. So yet again, we'll use the calculated element. You notice that it's a very useful node because it can just do a lot of very different things. Add a new element. And by the way, I could have done these as a single calculated element node. I didn't have to keep chaining these together. You see there is the option to add. But I'm just expanding it out to make things very clear. Let's just call this full name. Again, check my placeholder. So it's first name, last name, one word. So in my expression, return first name plus, and it's just taking standard string literal here. So I'm going to add a space to it, first name plus last name. Save that. And there's my result. Yet again, a new column. Again, just for cleanliness, let's remove those two fields, first name and last name, so they don't appear in our data set at the end of the day. There you go. Now, the last thing I want to do here is actually filter this data so that I only ever see results for the region name in the West. So it should only say West here. But before I do that, there's actually a problem with the data. I know it's not obvious in this data grid that you're seeing, but there's actually a leading and trailing space in region name for some of these. 
So that's going to give us erroneous results. So in order to actually clean that up, I'm going to add a new column, string column, and this allows you to perform some of the standard C-sharp string functions on various tables. So in my case, region name, I'm going to tell it to use the trim function, which will trim both the start and the end of any leading zeros or trailing zeros. Spaces, of course. And proving the data, it looks pretty much the same, but you'll notice these are left aligned properly. And the last thing, in order to do that filter that I want to see, I'm going to go and add a filter node. So filter, configure that node, basically saying region name, when, and I want to see when region name equals west. Say OK. And now you'll see in this process result, I only get west as I wanted, and generally a cleaner table. So now that we're finished here, we can use this data cube as the data source for one of our dashboards, rather than working off of the data connector directly. So hopefully this gives you an idea of what data cubes can do, and will help you start cleansing your own data.